Well, good morning and welcome to our online worship this morning. We hope that you're doing well. So just a one announcement before we begin this morning, just a reminder that our annual meeting, which was scheduled originally for next week on January 31st, is now postponed until such time as we can all get together in person. So, right, let us begin with the prelude. Our responsive reading this morning comes from Psalm 62. Your response will be, put your trust in God always. For God alone, I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. Together, put your trust in God always. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. Put your trust in God always. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Put your trust in God always. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. Put your trust in God always. And let us pray. O Lord God, we do indeed put our trust in you. Help us to hear, call, and follow you. Help us to trust in your word and your purpose for us. And Lord, may we always commit ourselves to you in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first Bible reading this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. And our gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 1. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, 
and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little farther. He saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Here ends this morning's Bible readings. And kids, it's time for the children's message. So this morning, we're going to uh, do a little science experiment about trust, since this morning we're talking about trusting in the Lord. So I here have a glass and some water, and I'm going to pour some water into it. All right. And now I'm going to put a little piece of a little uh, piece of cardboard over top of that. So here's our glass and our full of water and our paper. Now, do you think this this little cardboard here piece can can stop this water from flowing out of the cup? What do you think about that? Yeah? Well, how about if I turned it all the way upside down? Would you trust that the water wouldn't come out? Well, I know there's only one way to find out. Let's see if we can trust that this water is not going to come out if we turn it all the way upside down. Okay. There we go. Doing good so far. Now, what if I would take my hand away? If I take my hand away, what do you think would happen? Let's see. Here we go. Oh, look. The water's still in there. The paper's holding it in. Actually, it's not just the paper. It's actually the pressure of all the atmosphere pressing down on the bottom is holding that paper tight up onto the cup so the water's not flowing out. Well, that took a lot of trust, didn't it? We thought the water was going to pour down and go over all my sermon and everything. Well, you know, we can trust in God because God says that God will always be there for us no matter what. And God will always love us no matter what. God is really, really trustworthy. And think of all the trustworthy people in your life, maybe your family, your parents, and think about then how trustworthy God must be too. God always, always, always cares about you. So you can trust in God. And even at times maybe when it doesn't seem like, you know, it's everything's going to work or whatever, you know, think about that water being turned upside down and being held in by just a piece of board and the pressure of the atmosphere. Well, we can trust in God because God is a very powerful, loving God who wants the best for us. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Thank you. Our psalm today, Psalm 62, contains the line, trust in the Lord always. Oh, people. Our first lesson today from Proverbs 3 that we read says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In our gospel lesson today, four Galilean fishermen trusted Jesus enough to leave their fishing boats and their lives and become his disciples. What does it mean to trust in the Lord? Today, I want to explore that with you in this sermon. What does it mean to trust in the Lord? First off, I want to emphasize that trusting in the Lord never means denying the reality of our situation. Trusting in the Lord does not mean that bad things are not bad, that danger is not real, or that threats and risk may not become a tragic reality. Rather, trusting in the Lord means how we approach these situations. And it informs our choices as we seek to do God's will, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. Oftentimes it means summoning up courage as we are inspired to steer ourselves toward God, toward what God wants for this world. 
And we know that God wants love and justice and understanding and advocacy for the poor and the vulnerable. In other words, as we trust in the Lord, we summon up the courage to pursue the goals of the kingdom of God. This week I was reading many examples of this kind of trusting in God amidst difficult circumstances. I don't want to share two of these stories with you. The first one happened on January 6th, the day extremist supporters of President Trump stormed the U.S. Capitol, assaulting police officers and trying to overthrow the U.S. government. Some of them, we've learned, and not just a few, were actually planning to abduct congresspeople and senators. A sustained chant from the crowd even arose, hang Mike Pence. The story that I read about was about the chaplain to the U.S. House of Representatives. And yes, both the Senate and the House have official chaplains. January 6th was only the third day on the job for the House chaplain, Reverend Margaret Kibben, a Presbyterian minister who had also become chief chaplain to the Navy and had risen to the rank of rear admiral. Jack Pong Kibben was seated in the House chamber that day as the House debated an objection raised to the electors of Arizona, when suddenly the situation became chaotic. Speaker Pelosi and others were whisked away from the dais by security personnel. Word came that a crowd had turned into a violent mob and had overpowered the police and were streaming into the Capitol. The Congress people were told to take out the gas mask from under their seats and prepare for evacuation. At this point, amidst all this chaos, a house clerk looked over to Chaplain Kibben and asked her if she would say a prayer for the group. She remembers saying, sure, why not? I've been praying all along. As she approached the microphone to pray, she laid aside her gas mask on the table next to her. And Chaplain Kibben said that this kind of spiritual covering came over her the spiritual covering that she had often felt during times of combat. She said that this spiritual covering is what allows her to be present for others in a time of crisis. And so she gathered herself as the group quieted and she began to offer prayer to all those in the house chamber, many of whom were very distraught and fearful. Chaplain Kibben prayed, she said, for God's presence to to surround them like a hedge, to cover them. She prayed that in the chaos that the, the spirit would descend upon this room, she said, to offer us peace and order. She prayed that we would look out for each other, even as we are under stress. As the Capitol Police began then evacuating everybody, Chaplain Kibben continued to work by offering offering comfort to anyone who needed it. There are people of varying abilities, she said, varying health conditions and emotional states. And my concern was to keep an eye on whoever was frightened, whoever was struggling, that I might come alongside them. She continued ministering to members of Congress, staff, and even the Capitol Police officers themselves many of whom were under duress and in great stress. To me, the actions of Chaplain Kibben were all about putting her trust in the Lord into action. And you don't have to be a pastor or a chaplain to do that. Anyone can do that as we trust in the Lord. The second story takes place about 12 years before Martin Luther King Jr. was, was assassinated. We just celebrated Martin Luther King Day on Monday, and on this particular day, January 30th, 1956, at nine o'clock in the evening, in the midst of the the, uh, bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama, the segregationist exited his car in front of the King's house in Atlanta, walked up the front steps of the porch, laid down a stick of dynamite, lit the fuse, and ran away. Inside the house, King's wife Coretta and a good friend of hers from church were in the living room when they heard a suspicious noise on the porch. 
They got up and ran away to the back bedroom of the house where King's newborn daughter Yolanda lay sleeping. Seconds later, the dynamite exploded, ripping apart the porch and the living room. At that very moment, King was preaching in his church, ironically saying, our opponents have tried to all sorts of things to break us, but we hold steadfast. If all I have to pay is to go to jail a few times or getting about 20 threatening calls a day, I think that's a very small price, he said, to pay for what we're fighting for. As he ended his sermon, King received word that his house had just been bombed. And so he rushed home to discover a large crowd of neighbors gathered outside his house, furious that the king's family had been attacked and that and they were all clamoring for revenge. King walked up to his damaged porch, quieted the crowd with a, a raised hand, and began an impromptu speech. He said, we believe in law and order. Don't get your weapons. He who lives by the sword will perish by the sword. Remember, that is what God said. We are not advocating violence. We want to love our enemies, love them, and let them know you love them. I want it to be known the length and breadth of this land that if I am stopped, this movement will not stop. If I am stopped, our work will not stop. For what we are doing is right. What we are doing is just, and God is with us. That speech, I believe, profoundly exemplifies how Martin Luther King Jr. lived out his trust in the Lord. We can be inspired by the stories of Chaplain Kibben and Martin Luther King Jr. And even more so this morning, we can be inspired by our psalm, Psalm 62 and what it says about trusting in the Lord. Psalm 62 says, God alone is my rock, my salvation, and my stronghold. I shall not be shaken. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. In our, in our lives, there are times of difficulty and times of celebration. And with all this time of COVID, this would certainly qualify as a time of difficulty. In our society, there are times of turmoil and times of hope. And so it is in whatever situations we find ourselves in, especially in times of turbulence and struggle, that we turn to the Lord, that we declare our trust in the Lord as our rock and our stronghold. Trusting in the Lord does not mean denying our situation or even clinging to the idea that everything is going to turn out all right for everyone. Rather, trusting in the Lord for us is to summon the courage to say who it is that we are going to follow in this circumstance. Trusting in the Lord for us is to declare whose voice it is that we are going to listen to. Trusting in the Lord for us is committing ourselves to God's way of justice and peace and understanding and love. Trusting in the Lord for us is to throw our lot in with God's agenda for this world and bravely standing up against those who would espouse hatred, violence, racism, and dehumanization. Trusting in the Lord for us is to show compassion for everyone who's affected by the coronavirus, those who are sick, those who are unemployed, those who are working as medical and hospital staff to care for the ill, those who are working as school staff and pharmacy workers and grocery store clerks to carry on essential functions. Trusting in the Lord is to show special mercy to everyone who is grieving, such as those who are grieving the loss of family members due to COVID. Trusting in the Lord means to live as a disciple of Jesus, following Jesus in his mission of kindness and caring for this world. Trusting in the Lord means, as Chaplain Kibben said, to allow his strength to cover us, 
to allow his spirit to be our rock, his fortress to be our hope and our comfort. Trusting in the Lord means hard work and courage and focus and compassion. In your particular circumstances and during these sometimes troubled times, I want to implore you once again to look at the Psalms, like Psalm 62. Look at the call stories of Jesus calling his disciples. And look at any other Bible passages which can recenter you in God's love and God's mission, that you might know how much God cares for you and all of humanity. And especially allow your spirit to be lifted up by passages that talk about trusting in the Lord. May God and Jesus Christ come over you like a cover so that you may know in your soul that God is your rock, that God is your salvation, that God is your refuge. May you not be shaken and may God uphold you and strengthen you as you live trusting in the Lord. Amen. Our hymn this morning is Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult. Let us together profess our faith in God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, let us join together in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we place our trust in you. Please direct our lives forward in faith and courage that we may intentionally follow your will and seek to extend love to all people. As we trust in you, may you come over us like a cover 
so that we may know that you are our rock, our salvation, and our refuge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the furtherance of your kingdom of love in this world. We pray for an end to hunger and poverty, homelessness and unemployment, racism and bigotry. May your love prevail over hate, your mercy prevail over dehumanization, your peace prevail over violence, and your grace prevail over discrimination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, we continue to pray for our nation, the United States, and for our national leaders as we work to preserve our fragile democracy and promote decency. We pray for our elected leaders, our new president, and all who serve in to all who serve the public in governing and legislating. We also pray for wisdom and guidance and strength for our law enforcement and military, for our diplomats and for our public servants. Bless our country with your grace and compassion that we may exhibit grace and compassion to each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we especially pray for all who are affected by the COVID pandemic. May your presence be with all who are sick and suffering with the coronavirus, those who are hospitalized, and those who are recovering at home. We also pray for those who have lost loved ones due to it. We pray for our nation, as we have now surpassed 400,000 COVID deaths. And we pray for our world. We also with all medical personnel who bravely serve, with school staff and other essential workers, as they work on our behalf during this epidemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we trust in you, we also lift up before you today all who have needs. Be with all in our congregation and community who are sick, who are struggling with difficulties, who are dealing with burdens. We ask for your healing comfort to continue to be with the Angst family at the loss of Travis and with the family of Verna Good at her passing. We now also name all those other people in our hearts who we we're thinking about before you this morning. And please repeat their names. Lesia Angst, Dorothy Bean, Russell Beck, Eric Bentz, Linda Berger, Marie and Walter Buell, Kirby Burkhart, Sharon Frankhauser, Eugene and Hazel Fry, Nick Gaiman, Margaret Kuhlman, Eileen Culp, Laverne Lausch, Tina Lavernchuk, Jeannie Laura, Brittany Mann, Michael Martin Family, Mary Miller, Charles Moyer, Paul Moyer, Marlene Nagel, Roma Oberholzer, Betty Ramsey, Larry Ramsey, Jennifer Rideout, Ella Sensenig, Pastor Paul Smeltz, Becky Thunberg, Marion Weinhold, and the family of Pastor Jeffrey Lott, who passed away. We also pray for all others who name before you now either silently or aloud. May your loving spirit of grace uphold them and strengthen them in faith and hope and trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a good week.